next um, protein machine. And roughly what you think of as a, as a memory card in a, in a conventional computer, a DIMM, is, is what a compute node looks like kind of physically in, in Bluetooth. And if you look carefully at this, you, you'll see that there's, that there's a, sort of an interesting cooling solution here as well. But I'll leave it up to the, to the Blue Jeep guys to uh, talk about that more. Um, so, so, so now, you know, kind of to the to the to the problem, right? Um, so, so it's we, we know how to get more efficiency. Um, you know, in the case of, of, of IBM, we have uh, you know our, our supercomputers with power. We have Blue Jeep, we have Power Runner. Um, you know, right now we have supercomputers with with GPUs. You know, other accelerators. So, so many ways to, to get a more efficient uh, machine, uh, but the, pro the problem is, okay, I, you know, how, how, how do we program these things, right? And, uh, and, 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 and how do we get uh, to situations where, uh, uh, you know, piece of code is, is, still, is still, still portable? Uh, and, and this is, a, again, a chart uh, that, that today you look at this chart and say, oh, yeah, well, Actually, we put this chart together a few years ago, uh, and, and you know, it certainly seems to be common to uh, accelerators everywhere. Um, you know, one, <laughs> one look at the top 500 also convinces you that, at least in supercomputing, these things are really needed. Um, so, 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 you know, how, how, how do we bring this stuff together? Well, you know, I, I kind of look back at, at uh, you know, what, what, do, what can we really if, if you look at it from a, a programming perspective, what in code actually allows you to have efficient implementations? And it's, um, you know, so the complexity of a program is not only number of operations, which is the, basically the kind of complexity theory everybody learns in school. Uh, the degree of threat parallelism that, a, uh, that, that, that an algorithm allows degree of data parallelism, the degree of locality, we talked about that with, uh, with Cell, and of course also the degree of predictability uh, uh, that, uh, that, that an algorithm has. And, and you know, ideally you would like to have a language that, that allows, um, you know, either allows direct expression of, of these things or has a structure that makes it a tractable problem for a compiler to you know, extract parallelism, et cetera, from, uh, from the, the way the, the, the code is written. And, and, and uh, uh, today's sequential languages certainly, uh, you know, don't, don't have these. Uh, so we need a new uh, portable framework, uh, you know, to, to allow our, uh, our compilation and runtime infrastructure to retain enough information to actually allow us to efficiently target these, uh, these heterogeneous uh, architectures. Um, so, you know, I, I, I like to put in a, 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 a plug for, for OpenCL. So, so if, if you ask me, you know, what, why we didn't succeed in creating a very large market, I mean, we did so, sort of everything people tried, they were very <coughs> successful at. But when it comes to, you know, commercial use of, of, of infrastructure like Cell, people do worry a lot about, okay, um, is my code still going to run five or ten years from now? Is, you know, is there any, and, and we say, well, okay, we give you the cell SDK, it runs wonderful, but it only runs on cell. Right? And, um, and, and CUDA, which is certainly very successful right now, does have the downside that by and large it only runs on NVIDIA. Uh, there is uh, OpenCL, which has a very uh, you know, significant uh, group of users. It's a, it's a technology that um, uh, in, in IBM, we've, we've invested in. Uh, we've, uh, uh, we have uh, what we call technology previews uh, of OpenCL that run both on the cell processor, runs on the power processor. Um, you know, of course, uh, NVIDIA and AMD and also uh, have, uh, have versions of OpenCL. And there's reasons to believe uh, that it uh, could run on, on, on other, uh, other architectures as well. What is OpenCL? So, so the, the, the basic idea of, so, so OpenCL basically gives you two things. It, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm sure I'm oversimplifying, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but one very important thing it, it does is it gives you a standard notation for vectors. That might seem like a very simple thing, but, but, but so far we've always had, you know, different sets of intrinsics 
for, for factories, you know, depending on whether you're going to run on a cell processor, on a power processor, on an SSC, or, you know, a 3D network, or what have you. So there's a standard location for, uh, for factories. Um, and the other thing uh, that it does is it actually has a, an appreciation for locality. So there's, there's ways to, to uh, specify. Um, it's an open standard, uh, you know, it's actually the same set of folks that, uh, that did OpenGL, which actually came into being for, for very similar reasons as OpenCL. Um, in, in the case of OpenGL, uh, initially also wrote code, you know, specifically for any, any uh, graphic 